Hello, welcome to the Adalysis educational video series. I'm Brad Geddes, one of the co-founders of Adalysis. In this video, we're going to look at how to improve your PPC results with negative keyword management. So we're going to walk through is start with the beginner stuff, what are negative keywords, and what are their match types. Then we'll go into working with negatives and working with search query data and then how to use the negatives. Then we'll move to more advanced topics such as n-gram analysis. And then finally, when you start using a lot of negatives, you often end up with conflicts. So we're going to look at problem solving from conflict and also duplicate query management. So first off, we should define negative keywords. So when someone does a search, it matches your keyword, your ad can show. What a negative does is say if this negative keyword is in that search term, it stops your ad from being displayed. So negative keywords are essential for three main purposes. One, stop your ad showing from completely irrelevant queries. These are negatives you can add right from the beginning of account creation. Now secondly, you'll pick a lot of, of keywords that reflect your business and some of the search terms that match your keywords aren't going to convert. So that's a lot of our workflow is to find the underperforming queries and block those. And then third, it's to force the PPC engine to show one ad group over another when a search term can match multiple ad groups and multiple queries. So for instance, in this account, their overall CPA is about $20, but they've got some search queries, computer repairs near me, it's at 441. So this is a good example of using a negative keyword based on your search term data. Now the question is, what do you add? Do you add just the word computers? Do you add near me? Do you add minus me? And so when you start picking what query and what terms you want to make negatives, we need to look at match types that negatives use. So with negatives, they never match to singulars, plurals, different stemmings, and expansion to similar words like positive keywords do. What negative match types determine is the ordering of the words in the search term. So for instance, if we have the negative keywords television and LCD TV, and then we have search queries such as LCD television, well, the word television is in the query we don't show. Now in the second query, LCD versus plasma TV. Our second negative is LCD TV. It's broad matched. That means do these two words appear anywhere in the query regardless of order? We have LCD as the first word, TV as the last. They're both in the query. The ad does not show. Now for some of like LCD TVs, both the words are not in our negative list. We don't have anything blocking it because negatives don't expand to singles and plurals and therefore we would show for that term. Now with phrase match, this is very similar to phrase match positive keywords. The question is, is that negative keyword in the search term in the exact same order? Now a one word phrase match negative and broad match negative is the same thing since there's no order to a one word query. So in this case, we have the word television. It's in the first query, our ad doesn't show. Now our second negative, LCD TV, that is not in our search query in the same order. So while both those words are in the second search query, because they're not in the same order, and this is a phrase match negative, the ad would continue to show. We're going to do exact match negatives. This says, is this exactly the search query? So where this is useful is you may have one ad group that uses modified broad match, another ad group that uses exact match. So if they both use the same keyword, theoretically either one could trigger an ad for that search query, or that search term. So if you add the exact match negative to the modified broad match ad group, it forces your exact match ad group to show for that term. Now there's a few places we can use negatives. One is the ad group level. 
at the ad group level, what we're really saying is don't show this term from this ad group, which means we probably have a different ad group where we want this to show from. Now, if we don't want any ad groups in a campaign to show for a term, then we can use a campaign level negative. And that'll affect all the ad groups in that campaign. Now, if you have multiple campaigns, you don't want to use a negative keyword. Then there's a feature called negative keyword lists. You can make a list, add negatives to it, and then apply that list to multiple campaigns. Now, once it's applied, if you go and edit the list, you add new words, you remove negative keywords, that'll affect all the campaigns that use that. So for global negatives, which you just don't want to show for, or don't show for in a lot of campaigns, then campaign negative lists are very useful. So when we're adding a negative, right, what we want to think about is what level should it be added? The ad group, forcing another ad group to show, a campaign stopping this query from showing across the entire campaign or a campaign list. We want to have that negative in multiple campaigns. And then question two, which match type should you use? Now beyond the, the basics of negatives, the other issues we get into are organization and duplicate terms and duplicate queries. So for instance, let's say you're a web hosting company. You may have one ad group that's hosting another that's website hosting, another that's VPS hosting, and yet another that's cheap hosting. Now the question is, if someone searches for cheap VPS website hosting and all those ad groups have their ad group name and say modified broad match, all four ad groups could show. So what you end up with is what's known as duplicate search terms. That search term, cheap VPS website hosting, could appear in all four ad groups. So it's useful to use a tool that will show you the duplicate search terms. This happens to be ad analysis. And so you can see the, the term computer repair near me has been in two different ad groups. One of the ad groups is actually called computer repairs dash near me. It's the only one with conversions. So we'd want to now say in our ad group that's just computer repairs, let's make that exact phrase a negative keyword. So that'll force all impressions to go to the more appropriate ad group. And so you end up with sort of a layering system where we've got our hosting minus cheap minus VPS minus website, the more specific ad groups. And so we're forcing the queries to show for the most exact ad group that matches what a user is looking for. Now once we have our keywords and we start adding negatives and adding keywords in our search terms report, we can start to see has this been added, has it been excluded, or nothing's been done to it. it means it's not been added or excluded. So then you can look at your search terms report inside of Google or Bing and see what you've done with the queries. So when we think of search query workflow, it's fairly simple, right? We get a search query that we haven't done anything with. And we say, is it converting? Yes. Okay, great. We probably want to make it a keyword. So is there a better ad group? We should put that in. No. Let's make it an exact match on that ad group. Uh, is there a better ad group? Yes. Let's make a new ad group for it or add it to the appropriate ad group. All right. We look at our search terms, words we haven't added yet. Say, is it converting? No. So the first question is, should it convert? All right, is this a term that's so reflective of your business, it should convert? In that case, the problem may not be the term. It could be the ad and landing page being used. So then you may add that term to the correct ad group. Make a note for yourself. Hey, we added this keyword to this ad group. Let's check back in a week to see if it's converting here instead. And if you say it's not a good term, it probably shouldn't convert, that's a good negative keyword. So that's when you want to make it a negative keyword at the appropriate level across the account. Now, looking at this flow chart all the time, it's a lot of work. So it's very useful to just use some automated rules, right? Say, if conversions is zero and clicks is more than 150, let's mark this as a potential negative keyword. We could say if our cost per conversion is over 100 and you know cost total is more than 300, let's review it. You never want to fully automate making queries negatives. Bad things can happen. 
you know, your, your tracking can get broken for a couple days, your brand term drops down. If it's automated, you may add a brand as a negative keyword, it'd be a big mistake. So it's useful to set up filters to review words that hit the potential for making negatives, but don't fully automate it. Now we get into more advanced items. We can look at engrams. So the, the problem you get into a lot of times is you say, personalized plastic wine glasses, 56 clicks, no conversions, and it's only 56 clicks. Custom plastic wine glasses, 23 clicks, no conversions, ah, it's only 23 clicks. And suddenly you don't do anything with it. So what engrams do, right, is they don't say, here's a search query. They say, well, let's start counting the words up that appear across search queries. So in these five terms, the word wine appears five times. The word plastic wine appears three times. So we can aggregate the data and say, what is the aggregate data when the search term includes wine or includes plastic wine? So then that would show you your engram data. You can see the word wine. It's been in 97 different queries. If you think of it's been in 97 different queries at a total of 300 clicks. That's an average of three clicks per query. You would never have seen this type of information by examining your queries one by one. So now we can look at this and say, we've got two options really, right? We can say, all right, we sell personalized products. Wine cups aren't one of them. Wine should be a negative keyword. It's cost per conversions, astronomical compared to, to average for the account. Or we could say, wow, there's demand for this product. We don't sell this product. We should actually go talk to our boss, our client, and say, you know, we're going to make this a negative keyword right now, but you might want to add this to your product line. So engrams, because they aggregate data across queries, can not only do a better job of finding negatives and looking at queries one by one, they can also give you insights into how people are searching for new product or ad group ideas. Now the issue you get into is when you start adding negatives is you cause conflicts. So let's say you start advertising on TVs for a couple months and you know, you're like, oh, we don't want to do free. We don't want to do coupons. We don't want to do discounts. You make them all negative keywords. And after a while, maybe it's a holiday time, you're like, all right, we're going to offer free shipping. We're going to offer some coupons. We'll see how these promotions do. So you add these as ad groups and you don't get any impressions because you forgot in your negative keyword list, you have the word minus free and, and minus coupon. So it's useful to also monitor conflicts, which is when you have a keyword you've chosen that is being blocked by a negative keyword. Now, conflict should be intelligent in monitoring. If you have one ad group with a keyword and the exact match negative because it's a modified broad, another ad group with the exact match of that keyword with no negative, that's not a conflict. That's an organizational decision. So a conflict should be smart enough to know, right, is this actually stopping you from showing or is it forcing another word? So if you use system like Adalysis, you can automatically see conflict reports so you can get rid of those. So just to kind of recap things, right? Negative keywords, they're essential. They block underperforming queries. They block irrelevant queries. They ensure the correct ad groups being used, but they have match types. But regardless of match type for negative use, they never match the plurals, misspellings, or expand additional words. So what you want it is a workflow, right? Rule one should be if queries hit X, X could be clicks, it could be spend, it could be cost per conversion or combination, then we should evaluate that word to see should it be a negative. And so then when you start blocking words, you want to make sure you're not causing conflicts with other keywords as well, and on occasion review any conflicts that have arised just over managing the account. If you're looking to automate this, you can use a system like Adalysis, which automatically scans and brings this data to the forefront for you, or you can manually do this work within your AdWords and Bing Ads account. We hope you found this video educational on getting better PPC results with negative keyword management. 
If you want to try out a system, you can take a free two-week trial of analysis to see how that works for you between negatives and a whole lot of other automated systems to make managing your account much more faster and efficient.